Well, hello everyone. Marianne is going to start letting people in here in a few minutes and um, then we'll get started with our programming. We're on day five of Virtual Business Week and I cannot believe it. It's been an incredible, incredible week. So just give us a couple of minutes here to welcome everyone as they start popping on into our Virtual Business Week, day five. I'm going to be driving, so I am only going to be listening, okay? Okay. Be careful, Blanca. Sure, thanks. <laughs> Happy birthday, Kathleen. <laughs> Thank you very much. 58, feeling great. <laughs> you, look you look amazing. Well, thanks. I think... Thank I just just thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> That's not I have to allow, just thanks. Yeah, just you know thanks. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you have some fun stuff planned. I do. Is is Susan Renee Gibson part of this group? No, so. but we would love to have her. <laughs> <laughs> She's an energy healer and I did a little session this morning. It's like the first time I've experienced something like that. And so Great. It was pretty cool. So you're in great energy, great yeah. presence, and, and we can feel that. So yes, happy birthday to you, beautiful. We're so Thank glad you. you're here. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Hello. Hello, yes, happy birthday, Kathleen. I have to tell you, I saw that early this morning and it took me a second. I'm like, wait a minute, it's your twin's birthday. It must be hers too. <laughs> Hey, sometimes on my birthday, I've forgotten to say happy birthday to my twin. Like, oh, well, it's her birthday, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. <clears throat> All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started here. And yes, happy, happy birthday to you, Kathleen O'Hara. Um, it's really a privilege to have you here with us today, especially on your birthday. So thank you yes. for for joining us and, and not going and doing something else like celebrating. <laughs> but we will be celebrating you as we're here today. So thanks for joining us. And uh, yeah, so we are on day five of Virtual Business Week. And I just wanna say it has been an incredible, incredible week. I am just thrilled that all of you invested your time your money and resources uh, to spend time with us. Um, the whole focus and reason for creating Virtual Business Week was to give you daily doses, daily trainings uh, on various business aspects that would help you in growing your business. So especially during this challenging time, I think many of us, um, I know, I should maybe just speak for myself, <laughs> where, you know, when our world turned upside down, it was like, ah, I'm frozen. You know, what do I do? You know, how, how what are, how is this going to impact, um, not only globally, but what is the impact going to be economically for small business owners, for families, uh, for my own personal family and business? And I thought, okay, what can I do? You know, what can, what do I have control over? And I know how to put together a fabulous program. I know how to create events and I know how to bring the experts to the table and deliver. And that's what I did this week. And believe me, I was shaking in my boots going, okay, can I really pull this off? And I said, well, of course you can. <laughs> and I, I want you to have that faith and belief in yourself too, that whatever it is that you want to do, yes, of course you can. So I always say surround yourself with brilliance. So here we are surrounding ourselves, surrounding ourselves with brilliance. Um, so I just want to give you a little heads up of what to expect uh, today of our grand finale. Um, Celeste Giordano will be our uh, grand finale speaker trainer today uh, on building a legacy business. She's going to do her presentation followed by Q&A. So we're going to open up the floor so that you can ask questions and let Celeste do some hot seat coaching um, and really pouring pour into you. Uh, then we're going to follow by, um, we're going to do a round of networking because we're all here to meet new faces, right? And have some conversations. Um, and then we're going to have a, a, a freebie Friday grand finale, a bunch of door prizes. So 
um, that'll be a lot of fun and a great way uh, to end our time together. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started here. So today we have Celeste Giordano. Uh, she is the owner and of Celeste Giordano Consulting. And she provides leading business and sales systems for entrepreneurs, sales teams, and direct sales professionals. She has over 40 years of direct sales and business experience, and she founded Celeste Giordano Consulting Services um, to provide live events and custom tailored um, programming so that entrepreneurs, small business owners can achieve underlying goals to empower entrepreneurs and sales teams to accelerate their businesses and create more fulfilling lives. So Celeste is here today to share building a legacy business. So thank you so much, Celeste. Please welcome Celeste to the table here. I'm gonna pass over the microphone. <laughs> thank you so much, Carol. And thank you for each and every one of you being here today. Uh, you definitely made it a priority and we appreciate that. Most importantly, we appreciate Carol and her staff. She's had a whole amount of people today, uh, this week, helping her create this event, which has been an awesome event. So Carol, our hearts go out to you for all the effort that you and your team did to present this to all the business entrepreneurs and corporations this week. And before we get started, you know, a lot of things were from all over the different parts of the United States, and we've been shut up in this COVID-19, and as they are slowly opening up the states, um, each individual state this weekend, you know, we come across what's called Memorial Day. And um, my husband is, re is a retired veteran, and so I just wanted us to take a moment and just to remember what Memorial Day is. And I wanted to read to you because there is a difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. And Memorial Day commemorates the men and women who died while in the military service of their country, particularly those who died in battle or, is, or a result of wounds sustained in battle. In other words, the purpose of Memorial Day is to memorize the veterans who made the ultimate sacrifice for their country so we could have the freedom to be with our families and to have business entrepreneurs. We spend time remembering those who lost their lives and could not come home, reflecting on their service and why we have the luxury and freedom that we enjoy today. So I just ask that while you're out this weekend and enjoying the long weekend, hopefully with your family and friends, that you do take a moment and just pause to think of all those people that served in the military and lost their lives to uh, the cause of, for the cause of the war. So thank you so much, Carol, for that and allowing me to share that. Thank you. Um, we're going to get started here in building a legacy business where you don't settle for the status quo when you were meant to leave a legacy. And I want to know how many of you on this call today that showed up have been here in person all five days. And if you have, I want you in the chat to put your name and put number one. That means that you made this event this week a priority and you showed up in person. No, and I don't mean you watched the replay. You showed up in person when the time came to be here because that's important. You know, you invested in yourself and you showed up every day with an open mind and open heart. Now, some of you maybe couldn't show up every single day, but you have watched the replays and what a blessing that was for Carol to send those replays this week. If you have showed up and or watched the, the replays because maybe you couldn't show up every day, put your name in the chat and put a number two, if you would. And we're gonna share something very exciting with you when we get through at the end. And also, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. If I can answer them while we're doing the presentation, I will, or we'll save them to the end. Because I know that a lot of people have a, a mindset and some of it's good and some of it's bad around sales. So we're gonna move on from building a legacy business to what you're going to learn today. And what you're gonna to learn today are the three C's of a legacy mind shift, the four steps of the legacy business mind shift, the legacy business lead system, and the best operating strategies of a legacy business. And if you have any questions about what is a legacy business, make sure you put it in the chat because we wanna answer that. So you hear me talk about the legacy mind shift system. I didn't say, mindset. I said mind shift. 
you know, during the COVID-19, we've heard a lot of words like pivot, reboot, rebound. And a mind shift means that you do shift your mindset around certain things. A lot of people can have a positive attitude. A lot of people can have a negative attitude, but it takes a mind shift to stay in the zone with a positive attitude day in and day out. And basically in sales, you do have to have a positive attitude and you do need to learn to have a mind shift that you have a positive attitude every day because you make your living with your attitude. The word priority, and I said that earlier, each of you have made this a priority. To me, that's a very important word and it has a lot to do with a person's integrity and character. And I'd like to read the, de uh, the definition of prior uh, priority. It says a thing that is regarded as more important than another. It's the fact or condition of being regarded as the most important. The right to take precedence before others something that is more important than other things and that needs to be done or dealt with first. And you know, Carol made this a priority to, for beautiful faces going places to put this together. It took a lot of planning, a lot of time prior to putting this together, being here in person, and then afterwards. She made this a priority to give back because Carol is a person that loves to serve the community and we all know that. The other thing is, is that you made it a priority to be here. And you have husbands, you have spouses, you have children, you have grandchildren. It's a holiday weekend and you made it a priority to be here. So really the true champions on this Zoom call every single day this week isn't us, the guest speakers or Carol and her staff, it's really you. So congratulations for making yourself a priority. The three C's of a legacy mind shift is confidence, control, and consistency. So confidence is when your self-image aligns with your business image and people are buying you, not your product. You see, the me I see is the me I want to be. Yes, you can align your personal image with your business image. Who you are in your personal life is who you are in your business life. And that's an important statement. If you don't do, take anything away today, I want you to write that down. Who you are in your personal life is who you are in your business life. People are buying you, not your product or service. So your image is so very, very important. So when you look in a mirror, I want you to think about what do you see of yourself in the mirror? What are the values, the strengths, how you're operating in your life. And I want you to make a list of those things because I've been on this call this week and I've been with Carol on all the opportunities that she gives to get out and have breakout sessions. And a lot of things that I've heard over COVID-19 is lack of self-confidence, motivation, depression. I mean, the list goes on and on. So I want you to make that list of what values do you see, your values and strengths in yourself? And what do you think that your customers see with that? Is it exciting or is it scary? See, what you see is what your potential clients see, but the key is it's magnified 10 times. It's just like when you go into a networking event, we have introverts and we have extroverts. Some people love to network, some people don't. Some people love to get on Zoom, some people don't. So if you see someone who is unsure of themselves, then that's what the, your potential client is gonna see magnified 10 times. Now I know Deborah Fawaz is on the call here with us on the Zoom call today. And Deborah is a sister, she's a friend, she's a colleague, she's a professional image consultant. And Deborah, I'd just like for you to talk a few seconds about your first impressions about you and your business. Hello, everybody. Can you turn your volume up a little, please, Deb? Absolutely. Hang on. Can we hear her? You can't hear me? We don't hear you too well, Deborah. Is this any better? A little bit better. Let me get out of this. Hang on. Try it this way. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Thank okay. you. 
please tell us your name and name of your company first, Deborah, please. Yes, I'm Deborah Fawaz. My company's name is DD Faces, and I work with men and women to help them elevate their physical presence. So when you hear the word image, a lot of you, I think, are internally rolling your eyes back in your head and thinking, really, like, do I have to wear name brand clothes and spend a lot of money on my hair and my makeup? Your image is not just about what is on your person. Your image and your brand is how people feel after you have been with them, after they have been in your presence. I often have people say to me, um, well, these are the colors of my logo and that's, that's what I wear because I, I want people to remember me. It's not necessarily memorable. Your, your brand is not just what you look like, okay? Again, your brand is you, your presence, your personality, and how people feel after they've been with you. The first impression is, is all a big part of that. Am I talking about what you want me to, Celeste? Yes, absolutely. You're doing a great job, Deborah. Okay. Um, there's a whole lot of science behind first impressions and why it matters. But the bottom line is, I won't bore you with all the details of the research, but you have about seven seconds to make a first impression. That's in your subconscious brain. Your subconscious brain registers an opinion of an image on average in about seven seconds. So when you walk through that door, whether it's an interview, Panera coffee, meeting a, a client, um, walking into a networking event, signing on to Zoom for a business meeting. How you show up in those first seven seconds, people are, are making a judgment about you and not even consciously. So I know it's really cliche, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression, but it's really true. And we've heard all week long this week that people buy from you when they know, like, and trust you. Well, they have to have an opportunity to get to know you. They have to feel compelled to want to know more, to be in your presence, to find out who you are. And there's a whole lot of different ways you can do that. Uh, I talk a lot about being memorable, how to be memorable. It's not just about what you're wearing. It's how you make people feel. Are you a great listener? Do you engage them in conversation? You don't have to be an extrovert, but ask a question that doesn't end in a yes or no answer because then the door closes and then you're stuck trying to carry on a dead conversation. Um, the more you listen to people, the more they perceive that you like them. So if Carol and I are having a conversation and I let her talk all about herself, for 10 minutes and when she leaves she's really liking me and is going to want to be with me more even though she doesn't know much about me because i gave her the mic and showed that i was invested in her absolutely thank you so much deborah and deborah and i've done several workshops together and, and confidence and you know i'm not going to ask a show of hands unless you want to volunteer this because you know, not everybody is confident. We all have self insecurities. And I'm gonna share a story with you here about confidence. You know, I've been in direct sales since my early 20s. And I have all the confidence in the world when it comes to business, uh, when it comes to sales, when it comes to leadership, when it comes to managing people, directing people, leading people, I have all the confidence in the world. And I had a franchise that I worked 24 seven for like 36 years. But you know, the one thing that I lacked was personal self-confidence. And a lot of people would never guess that. And I don't know if any of you have lacked self-confidence personally, because there is confidence, self-confidence personally, as well as professionally. And so I never thought personally that I was an attractive person. And I never thought that I was, um, had a pretty smile. You know, when I was a child growing up, I had a bicycle accident and I lost, I lost a tooth and 
when I was growing up, I'll tell my age here, they gave us tetracycline. So it also turned the color of our teeth a little bit shade, a different shade. So I never would smile. I'd always put my hand over my face. Well, when I retired as an entrepreneur, one of the first things I did was hire a professional image consultant. And they told me if I'm gonna be in consulting, that I needed to have a professional photo. And so I was very fortunate at the time that I was involved in a group that I went and I had a photo professional photographer, professional image consultant, professional makeup artist and hair. And I was nervous. I had never in my life really ever had a professional photo or any of those things. I grew up where my mother never really showed me about makeup or how to apply makeup. So it was, um, it was a, 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 an experience that I grew up being very active in sports and not that I was a tomboy, but I just went to school, I studied, I played sports, I went to college on a scholarship and I studied and I didn't do all the foo-foo things. But when I did have the professional photo session with a makeup artist, a professional image consultant, the picture that you see with me in the blue and white shirt was the finished product. And it was an experience that I have never, I can't, I mean, I, I get tears when I talk about it. And when people come work with me, that's one of the first things I do with them is make sure that we have a professional image consultant, a photo session, makeup artist, and they have a complete redo to build confidence in them personally and professionally. And I'm not gonna go into all the details about that experience, but I can promise you it was a life changing moment for me personally, where I had confidence in me personally, where most people didn't know that I lacked self-confidence. So I just share that with you. And if, if that resonates with any of you, I'd love to have a conversation with you about that because who you are in your personal life is who you are in your business life. And you're a beautiful person inside and out. And don't you ever, ever doubt that. Okay, let's move on. The amount of control you have in your business also affects your income and happiness. And you're probably saying, what are you talking about, Celeste? So what is control? You know, control in your business also means that we have to know our numbers. And so we're gonna get into this, we're gonna talk about our numbers, but you also have to know and have control of your business about your income. You have to know where you've been, if you wanna know where you're going. And you also have to be able to control your happiness. You know, I make my living with my attitude and nobody messes with my attitude. I get up every single day, thankful and blessed. And it's a great day to be alive and to have an opportunity. So you can control the number of conversations you have with potential clients, how many networking events you're going to attend, the number of potential clients you follow up with, and the kind of interactions you have, phone calls, emails, social media, et cetera. So, you know, are you tracking these numbers? And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but it's important that you have the control and that you make a note and that you have a calendar and that you're tracking your phone, your conversations, your in-person conversations, your phone conversations. Make sure you're tracking your networking events and you wanna make sure that you vet your networking events. You know, beautiful faces going places, e-women with Amy, I mean, the, the, the chamber, the list goes on and on. But you wanna make sure that these are good, solid networking events, you know, that are filled with good quality people of the type of people you like to do business with. So you can't control the number at the end of the month. See, a potential client becomes a client through a real conversation. And if I was to ask you on the, right now today, can you tell me how many conversations did you have in the month of February? And I'm gonna say February because that's before COVID-19. And now, do you know how many conversations you had about your business, so let's say for the month of April? Because it's important to track those conversations. And a potential client becomes a client through a real conversation, not a Facebook post, not a social media post, not Twitter. 
And I know that we had Shannon Danese on the call Monday with us, who is first class and a full of wealth and knowledge when it comes to social media right there. But again, it's all about building relationships on these sites. It's not about trying to get sales based off of Facebook, Twitter, or an email. It's about building real conversations with people. And then after you've built those relationships, then Shannon can show you how you can maximize uh, and exponentially increase your sales and profit through using Facebook, Twitter, and emails. See, consistency is the key that holds everything together. If you're consistently taking the action, the money you're seeking is always going to be there. You know, one of the things that I notice with clients in the beginning is the consistency. We go to a networking event one month, but we don't go to the next. We will make sales calls one week, but we don't make them the next. See, consistency is the key that holds everything together. And that if you consistently take the action, the money is always going to be there if you act with consistency. You can consistently keep doing the same wrong things over and over and it's always going to be wrong. So why keep doing that? If you consistently follow a system every single day and week, you'll reach your goals. We've had several people on the, on the call this week. We, I think it was Lisa that showed us some systems and processes. I think uh, Marcy showed some systems and processes that we can use. And you have to consistently follow those systems every single day and week and you'll reach your goals. It's impossible not to reach your goals because systems are proven. The four steps to a legacy mind shift is establish your goals, know your numbers, run the formula, and follow the system. So establish your goals. Everybody on this call here today knows that you have to have personal goals and business goals. I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, you know you need personal goals and business goals. You have to create personal goals that get you to move. Let's see here, Carol, you're on the call with us here today. What are some goals? I'm gonna go back to that, Shannon, if you don't mind. What are some goals that get you to move? Oh my goodness. What are some goals that get me to move? Um, well, I'd say since the last uh, two months, I have really been focusing on my business goals. I feel like right now more than ever, what I have to offer is so needed for small business owners and entrepreneurs and for speakers, trainers, and coaches that need visibility. So um, yeah, my business goals uh, are, have been my main focus. And I love what you said earlier about consistency because um, I know sometimes we all get inspired. Oh, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to write an ebook, or I'm going to I'm going to create a virtual online uh, program, or you know we get the we get these inspirations, but um, and then for some reason if we don't see immediate um, results, we lose interest. And so um, I think with goal setting, you number one you have to so be inspired then you have to make, make the decision to go for it and then you have to be um, actively uh, consistent and you may not see results right away but I have discovered that if you're consistent over time that um, you will achieve your goals and I always say take a look at your calendar what is on your calendar because um, that is a huge reflection of where you are prioritizing your time and your energy and your resources. And if you're not getting results, you need to re, you know, reconfigure your calendar um, and your activity level so that you can achieve your goals. So, Absolutely. And thank you for sharing about those business goals. So I'd like to talk about personal goals because personal goals are definitely separate from business goals and they do play off of each other. Angie, you're on the call with us today. What are a personal goal that gets you to move personal? What is it, your family, your children? What is it that gets you to move personally? Uh, gosh, that really depends on the day, doesn't it? Right now, fitting into my clothes again is really motivating me to okay. <laughs> eat healthy and change my not getting out of my quarantine lifestyle. So personally, I'm motivated right now by my own health. Well, absolutely. And, and that's, that's uh, a key thing for a lot of people today. You know, I can't tell you how many conversations that we've had where 
with this COVID-19 that we've been sheltering in place and we have maybe not eaten the right healthy foods or we have overeaten or overindulged. I'm guilty of it. My husband loves to cook and, you know, we have to portion control, you know, with that. But, you know, a personal goal has to get you to move. It can be your health. It can be your children. It can be your spouse. Maybe it's a family vacation that you have in place. So a lot of people sometimes go in generalities and, and they, there aren't goals that get you to move. And, and that's one of the reasons why we don't achieve our goals is because they never get us to move. And I think when we set our personal goals first, and it's important that we share those personal goals with somebody that's important to us, that gets you to move. And I think it's important to share those goals with your spouse, your children, your family, your business mentor. It's very important that you share those with them and that they are a part of those goals so they can help keep you accountable. The same thing when it comes to business goals, you got to create business goals specifically for your client type business, as Carol was sharing right there. And I can't, there's probably not a week go by, Carol, that you and I do not have just a general conversation and that we talk about our businesses and, and talk about how we're going to grow our business or things that we want to do or how we can collaborate together. You know, I have an inner circle of people that I have these collaborations with and out of that becomes business goals. And you can refresh those business goals on a daily, <laughs> weekly, and monthly basis. But it's very important that you do have three personal goals, you do have three business goals, and that you do share them. The second thing is you have to know your numbers. Numbers create a legacy business. Every business has a magic number of leads. And I ask you, how many of you are tracking your leads? How many can go back to February when you were networking and you know how many leads you collected in the month of February? Now, during the COVID-19, how many of you know how many leads you've collected from being on how many Zoom calls have we been on in two months? Quite a few. You know, are we tracking our leads? And then you run the formula. See, look at the last six months. How many conversations have you had with potential clients? Put it in the box. How many of those potential clients became actual clients in the last six months? Put that in the box. Now you have two potential clients. Now you have two numbers that are potential clients and actual clients. You divide one number into the other and that gives you your closing ratio. And some of you may not even know what a closing ratio is and you may not have been tracking your leads because if you're not tracking your leads and tracking your sales conversations and then dividing that, then you, that's how you learn your closing ratio. So if you wanna increase your sales, you have to know how many leads you need and how many conversations you need to close for a closing ratio. And then you follow the system. How many actual clients do you want to have at a given time? Let's say that four conversations equals one client. 10 actual clients um, and, you want, and you have 40 conversations, then 10 actual clients, then your magic number is 40. Excuse me, I said that backwards. But it's important to know your magic number. So many times we just focus on getting a name and number, getting a business card, having a conversation, wanting to share with everybody what we do, what our products are, what, and everything. And you have forgotten the step about your lead generation and building the relationships first. People buy, as Deborah said, people buy from people they like, want, and trust. Now, if you don't pick up anything out of this call today, I want you to focus 100% of your time on the sales and leads in these next slides. So if you can look at this, and this is a lot more effective when you're in person, you have leads, leads equal appointments, appointments equal complimentary sales calls or in-person meetings, those equal sales, and then that equals cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Most people get up every single day when they're in the beginning stages of their business and it's like, I need to make X amount of dollars. I've got to make some money today. I have to make some money this week. I've got to pay the bills. I've got to do this. And this is all they focus on is the money aspect of their business. So I'm going to ask, um, I don't, I can't see everybody on this call, but I see Kathy and happy birthday, Kathy. Um, can you make any money without leads in your business? I would have to say no. Okay. I know 
Mary Ann's on the call. Mary Ann, can you make any money without appointments? Absolutely not. Okay. Shannon's on the call. Shannon, can you make any money without complimentary sales calls or in-person meetings? Nope. And I believe Marcy's on the call. Marcy, can you make sales, make money without sales? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Otherwise, I'm the best kept secret. Absolutely. So why do most people focus primarily on the money or X amount of money? See, the single most important thing you need to do as a business entrepreneur is focus on your lead generation and building relationships. And you have to track that number in order to know your magic number. So let's click the, the leads and let's look at all the options we have of where you can get leads. You get leads through networking, speaking engagements, just like we're being here today on Zoom call, list building, referrals, cold calls, social media, business groups, blogs, magazines, sponsorship. I don't know, there's, I don't know how many is there, maybe 10, seven, eight, nine, I don't know. But think about all the different avenues that you can generate leads from. And maybe you're not networking consistently. Again, figure out what networking works, work, networking events work for you and make sure you're consistently showing up genuinely interested in building relationships at networking. Maybe you are an experienced entrepreneur, you've been in business for a couple of years, you're great at speaking, you have a, a, a speaker sheet, you have opportunities to lead workshops, Speaking is the fastest path to cash, but you have to have products to share in speaking. List building, how do we do list building? I'm sure Shannon or Angie or Marcy, any, Lisa, any of the people that we had on, the, on the, the calls this week can tell you how to build list. Referrals, how many of you are consistently asking for referrals every single day, week, and month? See. Well, I'll get to that in a moment, but it, it's very important that you're asking for re referrals consistently. See, sometimes we ask for referrals and sometimes we don't. Well, the reason we don't get a great referral funnel is because we're not consistently asking for referrals. Cold calls, you know, sometimes we have to do cold calls. That's not my primary focus, but you know, sometimes we do have to do cold calls. Social media, again, Shannon Danase is, is the bomb when it comes to show social media and teaching you how to use social media. And sometimes you need to learn to do it and you have to do it yourself until you can learn to delegate. Ask Lisa Kempton, she can share about delegation. You know, from the day one when I started my business, I delegate, delegate, delegate. The only thing that I want to do is I want to have, I want to do lead generation. I want to build relationships. I want to have calls with people. I want to network with people. I'm going to delegate my admin stuff. I'm going to delegate my social media stuff. I'm going to delegate my uh, copywriting stuff with, you know, but again, I have team calls every week. I delegate everything, but I personally want to make sure that I'm networking, having conversations, I'm speaking, I'm doing workshops, and I'm building relationships with people because that's what I'm best at. And I'm going to stay in that lane and I'm going to delegate everything else. And sometimes you have to wear all hats in the beginning, but the the sooner you can follow a system, the sooner you can delegate because you'll make the money where you can afford to delegate. So all of these areas right here will give you the leads that you need, that you need to track, that will give you an appointment. An appointment is a date, time, and place. And so you're saying, well, Celeste, I know that. Well, how many of you have date, times, and place, and you're going to have this phone call with somebody, or you're going to go meet them for coffee, or you're going to have a Zoom call? and they don't show up or they cancel. Has that happened to anybody? See, a lot of times we don't set our appointments up correctly. A date, time, and place. So if I go meet Angie in the, and I run into her in the grocery store and I say, Angie, I, I haven't seen you in a long time. I would love to get together and have a cup of coffee with you. How about Tuesday, May 26th at 10 o'clock, we get together. And you say, sure, that'd be great. Well, I just sort of 
gave, gave this away here. If I just said, Angie, let's get together and have coffee, I'll call you. Angie say, sure, we're not going to have coffee. But if I give her a date, time, and place, chances are Angie's going to show up at Starbucks on Tuesday at 10 o'clock and we're going to have coffee and we're going to collaborate on how we can help each other or build relationships stronger. So it's important to make sure you confirm those and that you set those up in the beginning and also have some follow-up. Again, Lisa Kemp uh, is, is excellent about this where you have some uh, emails that go out and confirm these things. So your leads create your appointments. Your appointments create your complimentary sales calls or in-person meetings. So how many of those are you having a day? Are you having zero, one, two, three a day? What is your goal? And, and I, I didn't get into the business goals of that, but as an entrepreneur, you should have a minimum goal of X amount of conversations a day, whether it be in person or whether it be through phone or the Zoom call, what is your goal? And maybe, you know, I've hit home today that you really haven't had a goal of how many conversations you're going to have today. You know, when COVID-19 hit, I had a goal to have 10 conversations a day. And what that was is I wanted to have three personal family and friend conversations. I wanted to reach out to three personal and family friends that I could have a phone call with just to check in, say hello, make sure they were okay. And then I wanted to have three business phone calls or Zoom calls a day with people that I would like to collaborate or have conversations with. And then the other four came from when I was on social media, whether it be LinkedIn or, or Facebook or Instagram, that I had followed somebody's post and maybe I saw they were having a bad day or they were having a great day that I just wanted to reach out and say hello to them. So that was my goal during COVID-19. But as a business goal, my goal is to have three viable conversations a day where that's not where I'm just having chit chat or small talk. That's where I am talking to somebody about how I can help and serve them. And, and that's it. It's not about selling my product or service. It's how I can help and serve them. And then that goal turns into 15 a week and it turns into 60 a month. So I just want you to think about if you have three calls a day that you were tracking, how many new clients would you have at the end of the week? How many would you have at the end of the month? Just let that sit there for a minute. So your complimentary sales calls or in-person meetings is what's going to create the sales. How many of you get up every single day and say, I'm going to sell this product today, or I'm going to have a sale today. See, if you don't ever get up and believe you're going to sell something today, I can promise you it's going to be a big fat goose egg. And so many times we don't believe in ourselves and we don't believe we're going to sell because we have no systems and processes in place, let alone a mind shift to sell every day. Now, do we sell something every day? Maybe not. And that's okay. But you still, in order to start the day out right, you have to believe you're going to sell something every single day. So if I have three conversations a day, I know my closing average is one out of two. I am definitely going to make a sale today. If I do 15 a week, the closing average, if you're one out of three, is going to be three out of five. If it's 60 a month, it's 15 a month. How many would like to have 15 new clients? track your numbers. So your leads create your appointments, your appointments create your complimentary sales calls and sales, and then the bottom line is cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. So what is your lead goal? Now we talked about business goals, and I didn't go into detail. There's a couple of goals, or three goals that you want to set in your business. Number one is you want to know your pitch, and I think we had Angie on the call that talked to us about our pitch. So the very first goal, if you cannot give your 60-second pitch where people know exactly what you do, then that's your first goal for 30 days as a business entrepreneur is you need to get clarity in your pitch, okay? The second thing is, are you consistently doing your lead generation? Are you looking at these different things of, that you can do to create lead generation? So you need to have a lead goal. 
And if you don't have a lead goal, then that should be your, your second goal is your lead generation of where you're going to get your leads. Now, this, these numbers that I listed right here can be different for any type of business. You have to create a lead goal for yourself. So it may be 20 a day, 100 a week, 400 a month. It depends on what kind of referrals or, or what kind of um, lead generation tools you have in place. And I'm sure one of the ladies, Lisa, Marcy, Shannon, uh, Angie, can help you with some of that as well. So are you networking consistently? Are you doing any speaking where you add that? So if you imagine if you have like 10 funnels right there and you want 20 a day, I get up every single day and when I turn on my computer, there's lead generation right there because I implement all these. I have a magazine. I do sponsorships. I, I vet business groups. I do social media. I have referrals, list building. I speak. I network. I speak on a radio show. You know, I sponsor. I do nonprofits. So leads are coming into my email every single day because I focus on lead generation. This is what's going to give me opportunities for the appointments, the complimentary calls, the in-person meetings, the sales, and the, the money is the byproduct of following this process. So your goal may not be 20 a day. Maybe you don't have all these funnels in place, but make sure you have a goal. Let's say five a day. So that's 25 a week. That's 100 a month. But set yourself a lead goal. And, be a, and, be, and somebody just put a thing in there. Be a person of interest. Absolutely and track your lead goals. And then you have to track your complimentary calls and in-person meetings. You know, how many are you having a week consistently? Is it one, five, 10, 15? Again, you can't have these complimentary sales calls and in-person meetings if you don't have leads. So you wanna make sure that your third goal is to be very good about your complimentary calls or in-person meetings that you are there to serve people. You're not there to sell. People buy from people they like, want, and trust. And your complimentary call isn't about telling people about how great you are and all the services and products that you have. As Deborah Frawaz said, be generally interested in that individual and let them talk about themselves. You know, that's Dale Carnegie. Let people, they love to talk about themselves and they will tell you their services, they'll tell you their, their needs, their problems, and then you have the solution. When I get through with a complimentary call or an in-person meeting, I never talk about myself. And in the end, that potential client will say, Celeste, all we've done is talk about me. Tell me about you. Is it better if they ask for me to tell about me or for me to volunteer and tell about me? Do you see what I'm saying? If they're asking me, and that's fine, then I, I will tell them a little bit about me. But I sometimes on the first conversation, I'm not going to ask people to do business with me. You know, it's like going out. If any of you have ever been to a five-star restaurant, you don't go into a five-star restaurant and they sit you down and bring you the entree. You know, you have an appetizer. You know, you have a salad. You have a main course, you know, you'll have a dessert or, you know, there's all different things of the, of the five course meal. You know, you are an appetizer. Don't go and try to be the main course with somebody right in the beginning. People like to buy from people that they feel that genuinely care and are interested in them. So I encourage you to set some goals and I hope this has been very positive for you about the elite appointment and sales calls. So let's move on to the legacy sales system. And I'm just going to highlight some of this. I don't know where my time is at here. Um, we'll go on to the next slide with this. The top four issues slowing revenue growth is your time management, getting prospects to take action, no systematic selling process, and lack of referrals. Time management, if any of you have a problem with time management, one thing that I encourage all my clients to do in the beginning is, is get a sheet that's broken down to a week and make it from eight o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night and put it in one hour increments seven days a week. And the very first thing you're going to do each week when you're planning your week is you're going to put all your spiritual things in that calendar for the week, whether it be your church, your Bible study, um, anything that you have that's spiritual, you're going to put in that calendar first and put it in those dates. The second thing you're going to do is your family time. 
So maybe you have children you have to take to some soccer practice. Uh, you know, maybe you have a daughter that goes to dance classes. I encourage you also, if you're married, to put a date night in there with your spouse. Maybe put a family time in there where it's pizza and game night. You know, put your family activities in there. And then what's left, that's when you fill up with your business. You know, I know the first Wednesday of every month, I'm going to be at eWomen Network in Cincinnati, first Wednesday of every month. You know, just like beautiful faces going places. I know those events. I sign up, I'm there. You know, then I put all my networking that I am committed to consistently, I put those in there. And you know what? No matter what, I'm always going to be there at those events because that's a commitment I made to myself. And it's consistency, building those relationships with like-minded people, with vetted networking groups that have good quality people in there. I remember the first time I attended eWomen in Cincinnati, I told Amy, I said, there is a gold mine of people in eWomen networking uh, with people that need a service of what each and every one of you have. Just like beautiful faces going places, there is a gold mine in beautiful faces going places. Look at the people that Carol brought to the table this week. Look at the platforms that Carol offers you. There is so much there. And if you're not a member, I encourage you, that is a place that you want to be a member and you want to consistently show up week in and week out at both of those places. Getting prospects to take action, you know, again, prospects aren't going to take action if they, don't, if they don't like, want, and trust you, and you haven't built a relationship with them. No systematic selling processes in place. Again, we have a lot of people on the call this week that share different selling, uh, selling of processes, but again, you have to have a process of this lead generation uh, and building relationships and the lack of referrals, and how can you create referrals? Your four keys to a legacy sales, and this is a whole workshop that I do in itself. Tone mastery, inviting objections, key commitments, and complimentary sales calls. So tone mastery is important. Of how, It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Inviting objections, you know, this is so important. If you don't know the objections that you get well, snap of a finger in your particular business, your homework today before next week is you need to write down their top five objections you get with people doing business with you. So it's very important that you know your ideal customer's objections. And then what you want to do is put the answer that you solve to those objections and then how you intertwine and you invite those objections out in your sales conversations. So when it gets down to the end, they're not telling you have to think about it because you invited those objections out in your sales conversation. And so therefore, they've already, you've already answered those objections where they don't become the objection in the close. The only thing in a close that you can control is the affordability. You can't control, I have to think about it, I have to talk to my spouse, I don't know. That means you didn't ask enough questions to get people to think, decide, and respond, so therefore they use those objections. Key commitments is where you ask key points in your sales conversations, and then you recommit. So many times people are so busy, yak, 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 they love to hear themselves talk, and they never get key commitments from customers. And that's where you recommit, where you ask a key commitment question, and then you recommit by asking that question back by saying, Shannon, let me see if I understand you correctly. And you repeat that question back and they say, yes. I promise you, if you learn the invite objections and key commitments, you will never ever have a no objection at the end. Complimentary sales calls, again, there is an art to complimentary sales calls. How am I doing on time? Okay. Best business operating strategies. Do we have any CPAs or, or accountants on the call here today? If you do, put that in the chat and somebody let me know, please. Um, best business operating strategies. You know, you need to have relationships with these people, an accountant or CPA. If you're not getting a P&L statement monthly, or at least quarterly, um, you need to have a, have a conversation with me because you need to know your money in and your money out. 
uh, you need to have a relationship with an attorney because I promise you, if you're in business at some point or time, you're going to need an attorney in your business. And it's better to have that relationship instead of be looking for referrals for somebody. A banker, you know, we live in a virtual world. How many of you even walk into a bank today? I make it a point to go into my bank every month. Not that I need to because everything is automated, but I make it a point to go in there just so I can say hello to the vice president of the bank. They know me by name because at some point you're going to want to grow your business. You're want to, going to want to reinvest in your business. A financial advisor. This is huge. I don't care if you're making $5 profit a month or you're making $10,000 a month profit. You need to have a financial advisor and have a plan of action. An insurance agent. You need to have a, a conversation with your insurance agent at least twice a month. I mean, twice a year. Um, and you need to do some reviews on all these things. Make sure you're getting the best product for your money. Social media manager. Again, I delegate, delegate, delegate. We have several of them on, on this call and in this beautiful Faces Going Places. I can tell you I have a personal relationship with Shannon Donise, and, and she's my go-to person. And, and I matter. I have a couple of social media people. I have somebody that strictly schedules my events, and, and then I have somebody that does my social media, and then I have somebody that's in the back end of it. And there's so many different things they can do. And, and then have an online business manager. You know, my online business manager also is a graphic artist. Uh, she helps produce uh, books. So, you know, have these people in your back pocket. We have Joni on here that does Christian books. I mean, get to know these people because at some point you're going to build on your business and you're going to need one of these. Operational items, a business plan. I think Marcy talked about business plans. Um, you, you have to have a business plan and you need to have the accountability on it. Uh, separate bank accounts, you know, again, get with your CPA bookkeeper, but you definitely need to have two separate bank accounts. Once you intermingle the two, now you've set your, yourself up for liability. You want to make sure you have the proper business insurance, especially with like the COVID-19. And if you had the right insurance, you should be able to, to do some things with that. Proper tax documentation, your business entity, is it a sole proprietor? When do I become an LLC or when do I incorporate? A uh, PPP program is not what you think it is. It's called Profit Protection Program. I don't care if it's $5 or if it's $10 or it's $100, but figure out a savings program based on your clients. Every time you get a new client, you're going to put X amount of dollars into a separate account, a PPP program. At the end of the year, you're going to have an enormous amount of money that you can reinvest back in your business. In my direct selling business where I had a franchise, I put $100 for every product that, that I had to buy. There was only one product, but every time I bought that product, I put $100 in the bank. At the end of the year, you know, it was nice to get 60, 70, $80,000 back to reinvest in your business and you didn't touch it. Uh, workman's compensation insurance, we have a, a bunch of people that, that can help us in the insurance, uh, doors, with uh, door, um, and um, I forget her last name, but you can get with Doris. Reinvest cash back into your business in your first year. Collect and pay your sales tax on a timely basis. So those are all proper operational items. And you know, a business coach can also help you with those things. But most importantly, a good business coach is going to have vetted people that you don't have to worry about that they can deliver those people to you on the snap of a finger. Next. Learn, grow, achieve, and prosper so you can achieve your goals. You need to set goals for the week and month, track your numbers, have constant communication with a business mentor or coach at least two to four times a month. Um, all of my clients get a weekly call with me every week and um, attend mastermind events. We, do, we have mastermind events every quarter. It's very important because this is where you can collaborate, build relationships, and build camaraderie. And my gift to you uh, is please take a picture of this. You can crack your bank code at www.mybankcode.com, slap backslash Giordano. You're welcome to a 30-minute discovery phone session. That link right there will connect you to my calendar. Uh, and um, most importantly, you owe it to yourself to reboot yourself and rebound from this COVID-19. It's going to take a mind shift. And there's a lot of people that have been on this call this week. It's been a wealth of knowledge. 
If you haven't taken advantage of the complimentary calls with these people, I encourage you to do that because all of us are here to help serve you and help you grow your business. And as Marcy said, it's give, give, give. You know, my motto is I'm here to serve you and to help you. And when, when for 42 years, I spent my time just working and helping people, but I never served. And in the last seven years, my number one priority is to serve people first because God will bless everything else. Carol, thank you. Thank you all. And if there's any questions and we have time, I'll be glad to answer them. Wow. All I can say is wow, wow, wow. That was just phenomenal and fantastic. I, I took like mega notes here. And uh, what we'll do right now is just open it up for Q&A. Is there something that you'd like to ask or a takeaway um, that you could ask uh, here with Celeste while we've got her on the, the call and let her do some hot seat coaching for you? All right, Joni. Hi, I just wanted a clarification on um, when you were doing the four keys to, to sales and you talked about the inviting objections, which was great, I got all that. But then you talked about the key commitments and I didn't get that. I didn't really quite track with what you were saying. Well, key commitments are part of, a, of, of my sales conversation when I'm having a sales conversation with somebody, Joni. So in other words, key commitments are things that maybe we've had a conversation and we were talking, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero in on some, some key commitments that maybe in that conversation I might say, uh, and, and I'm sort of doing this off the cuff, and it maybe has nothing to do with your business, Joni. That's okay. But, so, so in other words, Joni, um, you know, what you're telling me is if, if you know, you, utilizing this service was – $2 a day, it wouldn't take food off your table or change your lifestyle in any way. So these are the kind of questions you're asking. You're just trying to keep getting yeses and you're trying to get well, that, Exactly. Right? I want to weave that in there. So in other words, it depends on the product or service of, of what I'm doing or what the need is of the potential customer. Because when, when I'm talking to that potential customer, you know, they have a need. And so therefore, I'm going to ask some key com commitment questions. Number one, is key commitment questions for really start with the, the objections. If, if, you know, if I know that a lot of people use the husband objection, you know, I'm going to ask some conversations about that. And then when they answer, I'm going to repeat that question back to them. So, so in other words, what you're telling me, Joni, is this because you already told that to me. See, people don't intend to lie to you, but what <laughs> happens is, is that we ask a question and then we just skip over it and we go on. And then it surfaces in a close and it's like, well, she said that wasn't the problem, but the problem is you didn't recommit that question because when you recommit now, I really had to think, decide, and respond on that recommitment and I'm giving you my word now. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Does that help a little bit, Johnny? A, a, a little bit, yeah. My my clients are committing to kind of four to six months services. It's not it's not coaching like business coaching, but it's probably it's more analogous to that than it is to say, you know, buying something, buying a, a product. Uh, there's okay. Not. Well, so uh, so their their objections are going to be around value and around. Um, uh, what, you know, some of this they could do for themselves. I mean, you know, I, I would, much of what I would do to fall into, you could do this for yourself. You do a lot of this for yourself, but do you want to take the time? And you would have to learn all these things or, you know, I have it. So there's, it's that, those kind of, um, those, those kinds of objections. But it's, so, so you're saying it's a follow on to the objections, to raising the objections, which I thought was a really good point. Yeah, it's part of your conversation. So you know what your top five objections are. So now you need to build your sales conversation out of those five objections where that sales conversation is going to involve those objections in a way that you get people to think, decide, and respond. Mm -hmm. So another thing, and I don't, and I, this goes into detail in my workshops uh, when I do these, is everybody has a product or service and you have a price. So you need to learn to, to break that price down. And so what ha people have a tendency to do is they never break the price down in your sales conversation and so therefore at the end, whenever you're going to ask for the order, you're going to say, and for only $6,000. Whoa, what are you talking about? $6,000? I can't even think of, no, my answer is no. 
well, that's $500 a month based on 12 months. What's that break down to weekly or daily? And so then you have oh, a conversation breaking down a smaller bite where they commit to, you know, with spending an additional $125 a week to give you peace of mind to do this, 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 this. Oh yeah, I could do that. So now what did they just tell me when they said that? That they could afford $500 a month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one at yeah, the end. I, I found the same thing um, that uh, because we, you know, a lot of us sell big ticket items that are big, long commitments. And I think it's the fear of um, are they, have they had a chance to experience you yet? And um, are they um, like, it, it's like what you said, you don't come in and, and get the full platter or you don't marry the person on the first date. So sometimes you, you know, you have to give a little bit, um, as I've been saying all week, give, 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 and let them experience you in smaller bites. And then they start to fall in love with you. And then they want to work with you because they've learned about you. And then the $6,000 is absolutely no problem. So I highly recommend you, you work with Celeste to get that um, sales strategy down. So when you're making the offer, they've experienced you in so many different ways and they just love what you're saying and hands down, then you offer the, the monthly payment program or, or split it up into pieces and it makes it a little bit easier for them. But right. they've already right. fallen in love. Uh, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Marcy. And I, I you know, we have a, a, a wide spectrum of people on here with different products or services and different prices. When I first started my coaching and consulting service, you know, it was um, a 12 month program. And then I had a six month program. Well, when I started doing workshops and I started thinking about this, I said, and it's something that I don't advertise. If you go to my website, you see a 12 month program. Okay. You see a high level program and then you see a silver council and a, gold, uh, a golden circle council. So when I did workshops, I decided that I would offer for first time workshop people a 30 day program mm -hmm. and it broke it down to the small bite because maybe they, you know, maybe three or $6,000 was a lot of money for them, but maybe $1,500 for three months to jumpstart their business. And I know for a fact in 90 days that I'll jumpstart a business for somebody that they could bite that big, bigger, you know, better than they could bite 3000 or 6,000. Mm -hmm. And so when I had them for, for, for 90 days, you know, I have a great retention rate of people. I have people still in my program that have been with me seven years, five years, four years. Deborah Fawaz has been in there, what, a couple of years. I mean, you know, they, they don't, three, three, yeah, they don't leave. They stay because of the value in the content, just like Marcy said. And, and it's not a cookie cutter thing. It, it, it's customized for you and to grow your business. And uh, you gotta be careful on coaching um, programs because sometimes they're just cookie cutter. It's this way and it's on autopilot, nothing against autopilot right there, but it's gonna be this, 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 and that's it. No, everything is customized. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that answered it, Marcy. Yeah, or, no, that, that clarified. I just wasn't clear on exactly what you meant by key commitments, right? Yeah, yeah and so, you know, that. Joni, and I'd love to have a complimentary call with you and let's dissect your business and then I'll help you with those key commitments and and objections and where we can get them overcome and work on a sales I'll, conversation. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Yes, yeah. ma'am. That was all really, really good stuff. And I love that, Celeste. It's, um, I, I, and I love your approach to your consulting business. It's, it's not a uh, one size fits all. It's not a cookie cutter approach. You know what I mean? It's individualized depending upon what your client's needs are. Um, Absolutely. Any, anyone else have a, a question or something they'd like to have Celeste uh, do some hot seat coaching on. This is your opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't bite. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, well, sometimes it's very personal, Carol. Well, and, you know, and, and know. again, this is a very sacred place here. And I know Carol says that all the time. You know, it's <laughs> a sacred place. But again, I would love to have a, comp uh, a complimentary call with you. And if it's personal and you'd rather, you know, share it personally, I would love to have that conversation with you. And, and I am a great connector. And, you know, if I can't help you, I promise you, I have an arsenio of people that I can connect you to of what you need. You know, there are some people out there that, you know, are interested in you just like that. And, and I'm very selective. Deborah's on this call here. Shannon's on this call. And Carol, and they know I'm very selective. I don't work with every Tom, Dick, or Harry. And you don't even have to work with me. I'm here just to help you and guide you. And I will put you in the right direction. It's all about serving you. It's nothing about sales. 
I do have a question, Celeste. Yes, ma'am. This, this is Nancy. Um, how do you stay motivated, especially during this COVID and weather? How do you stick to your eight to eight calendar? <laughs> well, and it's not, it's not that I work eight to eight. And, right. and, and again, so, you know, I have, I have, I, I am very good at time management. Um, I'm an old fashioned person. So I have my day planner. I have a desktop planner and I do keep things on the computer and, and, and the phone and things of this nature, but being in direct sales for over 42 years, I learned at a very early age, Nancy, to control my attitude. And I remember one of my, one of my mentors told me a long time ago, nobody messes with your attitude. You make your living with, between your two ears right here. And this is a sacred place that nobody messes with. And so when I had a franchise as a brick and mortar business and a direct selling business, and I had a lot of salespeople to work for me. And when they came in the door, I couldn't afford to let one negative person come in my office because they would contaminate the entire group. And if I noticed that somebody had a bad attitude, Nancy, I would say to them, Hey Betty, maybe what we need to do is let's walk back out this front door and I'd walk back out the front door and I was always there to greet them every morning. And I say, we need to get an attitude adjustment. It's a great day. You know, you need to know your goals. You need to be positive. You need to, you know, say your affirmations. And I used to teach them to say, you know, we are positive. It's great. And I like myself, you know, boy, it's a wonderful day, you know, and just say some self affirmations. And, and then I would let them come back in. So I've always been trained to keep a positive attitude. And yeah, there's a reality. There's some things that are negative and that, but you know what? I push that to the back burner. I, during my, while I'm working, I can't afford to let any negativity come in at all because that's how I make my living. And there's a time and a place to deal with that, but it's not when I'm working right there. And, and you got to believe in yourself. So a lot of that thing is, is some, some of it, Nancy, could be some, some self-confidence right there that we need to be more positive about that. And it is a mind shift to train that where you don't allow the negativity to come in, you just push it. You have to push it away. You're not coming. You know, I, I, I rebuke you devil. You're out of here. Not today. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm just not going to allow it. And the other thing is, is to be with like-minded people. Remember I said, I called 10 people a day in my COVID-19, you know, it's important to check on people. When you are serving other people and checking on them, guess what that does to you? You're going to get more benefit out of it than anybody else. Yeah. When you genuinely care for somebody. And it's good to have an accountability partner, you know. And again, I'm not trying to sell myself, but that's one of the things with, with my clients. You know, most business consulting or coaching firms only give you two calls a month. You know, I, I'm a renegade. When I started the consulting business seven years ago, you got 15 minutes or 30 minutes if you were high level twice a month. And I was like, how dare you? You know, I need to be in touch with my clients every single week. And you're going to get one hour a week because I generally here to serve you and care about you first. And I know on a weekly basis that you're never going to fail. You can have a bad day. You can have a bad week, but you'll never have a bad month when you're being held accountable. Good point. Did that, did that help Nancy? A lot, yeah. <laughs> and we got some great people in this group. <clears throat> oh, that was fantastic. I just wanted to make an observation, um, <clears throat> Celeste. I feel like uh, I'm about a year into the business that I'm doing now. And so I feel like a lot of what I'm doing is seed planting for the future harvest um, in all the different business aspects that you were listing that we do for lead generation and so forth and branding yes, ourselves. But when you were talking about how um, speak and I, I put in the chat that you're a person of interest that unless I'm wrong, I'd like your feedback. Like if when you're newer in your business and you're trying to attract clients to you, or you're maybe in a little bit of a not go after, but you know, you're in that, you're in that mode, but then there's a point in time where you become that person of interest based on all of those things that you've placed in motion. And now people are coming to you. Absolutely. So that, that's what I 100% noticed when you were talking about 
being a speaker and a podcast and on a radio station. And those things don't happen day one because you haven't really established your credibility in your field. But once you do, then all those things maybe start to fall in place. Kathleen, may I ask what, what's, what's your product or service that you do, your business? I'm a uh, transformational health coach and okay. I, yeah, help people create wellness in their body, mind, and finances. Okay, very good. So when I, when, when I transitioned from being a business entrepreneur for 36 years and then seven years ago went into the business consulting, first of all, I want you to know I had no idea what business consulting was. I had blinders on for 36 years in a direct selling field with a brick and mortar business where I recruit, train, promote, and retain salespeople 24 seven. That's all I knew. I never, and that's with one company and I never looked for anything else in my life. So I didn't even know anything that was out there. I didn't, you know, I mean, I've heard of Coca-Cola or IBM back in the days, but I, I mean, I never looked for another career opportunity for 36 years that I was in direct sales because I made a, a very, very good living. And the reason I got into direct sales was for opportunity, recognition, and money. And the company I was with provided all three and I worked my way up into a franchise owner and I had two franchises. So when I transitioned and somebody mentioned that what I should do is consulting because I recruited, train, develop, promote, and retain people where they could own their own franchise. They couldn't buy the franchise. So consulting was sort of like the same thing. So somebody said, this is what you need to do. And I scratched my head and I said, what's business consulting or coaching? And so I started following some people and I went to some live events and I invested my money into these things to learn the ropes. Well, after about six months, I realized number one, you need to have a newsletter because seven years ago, everybody had a newsletter. It went out every single week. Well, again, remember I said from day one, I delegate, delegate, delegate. I delegated everything. I had a business online um, manager from the beginning. I had a social media person from the beginning. I had copywriters. I had everything from the beginning and I delegated. I invested my hard earned money into being successful. Everybody says, Celeste, you're wasting your time on writing a newsletter. And I said, I'm not going to stop. And back seven years ago, I was spending lots of money on a newsletter every single month, sending it out weekly because people don't read them. Well, guess what? You can check your analytics. We got all the experts on here. I was getting 50, 60, 65% open rate of my newsletters because I did a newsletter. Guess what I did? It's never changed in seven years, Kathleen. Kathleen, every Thursday, at 9.30, I have a newsletter that comes out every Thursday. It goes on social media. It goes LinkedIn, Instagram, goes everywhere. Twitter, goes to all of them. You would, I open up my email every Thursday. I have a boatload of comments from my newsletters. One of the things that I encourage people to do if you're in that particular area is you need to, for credibility, you need to have a newsletter. Newsletter gives you credibility. You're the expert. As Mar uh, Marcy said, you're the best kept secret. And if you don't have a newsletter going out, how do people know about you? So if you're not doing a newsletter, that's something that I would encourage you. And maybe you don't want to do one every week, but at least do it twice a month. Did that help a little bit? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just wanted to add quickly to what Celeste said, just very quickly, because I know we're running short. Um, a lot of what she is saying is everything that you learn from her and you take from her, LinkedIn is an absolutely wonderful platform to be doing all these things she's talking about. So once you get that, because it's very organic, at least right now, um, it's not the ads, it's not the things everyone else can. So different strategies of LinkedIn can be a really easy way to build that trust. Like Celeste, get her, get, her direction and then start using that. I think it's very underused and it's growing quickly. I did a presentation two months ago and the number of users went up 15 million in two months. That's how quickly LinkedIn is growing and you can be seen there and it's a way to have people trust you. Absolutely. And you know, as, as Angie was just saying, you know, if you are an expert in your field, how do people know you're an expert? You know, this is where we go back to that thing that you're constantly telling people you're an expert. Telling isn't selling. It's better to have somebody else 
say that you're an expert as opposed to yourself. And when you're writing about these subjects in, in, your, in your arena, you know, now you become a matter of, of interest and you do become an expert in your field. And then people start sharing your blogs and doing things of this nature. And then the next thing is, is get a signature talk. You know, we have all these people, oh, I can talk about this. I want to talk to anybody, everybody. No, stay in your lane. Be an expert in your lane. You know, it's just like when we, we go networking. Well, I have two companies. Let me tell you about this. And then, oh, by the way, I do this. You know what? X, you're not my expert anymore. I don't want to hear from you because you're in there trying to tell me about all the things you do. You should be doing one thing and one thing only and stay in your lane. You can have multiple streams of income, but when you're building relationships, stay in your lane. Wow. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I could go on. I love this. I, and this is why I do workshops. And, and I'm looking forward uh, with uh, Shannon, as well as Carol Dockham, that we're, we're going to be putting together some workshops, in-person workshops, the second half of the year up here in Cincinnati, as well as Atlanta. And, and I travel and, and put on workshops and speak. So, that, you know, let's just, I'd be glad to have a call and help anybody and, and have a complimentary call and help how you can guide your business and give you some, some tidbits. Oh my gosh, this is, this is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Celeste, on sharing. I mean, there was a lot of information on building a legacy business, but seriously, if you are building a legacy business, really need to dive into all of these um, elements of, of the sales process. And um, there's a lot of information there. I'm just thrilled that we recorded it so you guys can rewatch uh, and really take a look at the slides and then start uh, diving in and applying uh, the different elements to your own business. So thank you so much, Celeste. You, this is, I mean, we haven't heard the last from you. We will be no. seeing more and learning from Celeste as time goes on and uh, she is part of our success team here and thrilled to have her on board. So thank you again, Celeste. That was Welcome. awesome, awesome. And now we've got a special guest today. Her name is Terry. Um, Terry, are you ready? And if everybody can just unmute themselves, go ahead and unmute yourselves. And Terry uh, is... Hello? Go ahead and talk. Oh, hi, Terry. Thank you for joining us. We're ready for you. We are going to sing happy birthday to Kathleen. Hey, Kathleen. Yeah. Happy <laughs> birthday. Okay, here's your note. We'll do it together. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kathleen. Happy birthday to you. Terrible. Okay. You sound like you sound like my family when they exactly. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much, Terry Lynn, for leading that uh, beautiful guitar playing for us to sing Happy Birthday. <laughs> Um, okay, so real quick, I know we're running out of time, but I would love for us just to go around the room and just state two things, your name and your company, then we're going to dive into uh, the door prizes. So uh, we all know Celeste, we all know myself, so Shannon, take it away. Hi, I'm Shannon Donastay with Five Star Social Media, and um, I'm a social media trainer, so if you need to learn a social media platform or many social media platforms. Um, I'd love to help you one-on-one -on -one or, or help your team. Thank you, Shannon. And Ann Thompson. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Annie Thompson. Most people call me Annie. I'm owner of Annie Maggie. So I'm a virtual assistant. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. And Angie. Hello everyone, I'm Angie Thompson, living in America. I'm a communication specialist, so I help you find the very right specific words to help you with your social media and Celeste's imaging and everything else. And, and Angie was our, our speaker trainer, this coach, on your 60 second commercial, so you can watch Absolutely. the video replay. Um, Mary Ann, welcome, good to see you. Hi Mary Ann. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm Marianne Chaporn, and I'm the skin care consultant for Modane and Fields. Welcome. We're, it's so good to see you, Marianne. Thanks for joining us. And Lisa. 
Hi, I'm Lisa Kempton with Sage Peak Business Solutions. I help businesses create systems and processes and then put those systems on automation. And you were our speaker presenter yesterday. Thank you so much, Lisa. You did a fabulous job. We really enjoyed your presentation and everyone can Absolutely. catch the replay. And Kathleen, the birthday girl. <laughs> uh, my name is Kathleen O'Hara and I'm a certified transformational health coach with uh, Healthy Living. Fantastic and happy birthday, Mary happy Ann. Birthday. There you go, Mary Ann. I thought you taught me before. Um, <laughs> my name is Mary Ann Bailey. Um, I teach senior citizens how to use technology. Fantastic. And thanks for being our co-host today and uh, keep taking good care of the chat room. So Absolutely. Oh, thank you. And Terry Lynn, welcome. <laughs> Say hi. Thanks. Um, I am designstogrow.net, uh, branding, marketing, and social media and graphic artist. And guitar player, <laughs> musician. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a I have I have a lot of different brands. So, Carrie's yeah. on the line, and she's also going to be helping me um, with my new yeah. business venture as well. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for joining us today, and Marcia Reiner. Hi, everyone. I'm Marcia Reiner. I'm a financial business strategist, and I've helped tons of small business owners create and implement a business plan so they know the exact strategies they need to take so they can make more money in their business. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining us, Marcia. I so appreciate you saying yes to this opportunity to really share your expertise um, uh, with you know financial planning as well as business strategy and just developing business plans. So uh, thank you for, for being with us here this week. So appreciate you. And you guys can catch her video replay as well. <laughs> and Neil, the fragrance guy. <laughs> yeah, my name is Neil Pishka. I am, the, my company is a fragrance guy and I'm a fragrance specialist and help people bring fragrance into their life. Thank you so much, Neil. And someone is going to be the lucky winner of a, gi a gift basket of some fantastic fragrances by Scentsy uh, and Neil, Neil here. So um, stay tuned. Hope you're, hope you're <laughs> the lucky one. <laughs> Hi, Anna. Well, I'm from Huntington Learning Center. We're in Crescent Springs and we help students to get the best education possible with their academic skills and with their ACTs and ACTs. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us this week for Virtual Business Week. Hi, Tiffany. Good to see you. Hello. I'm Tiffany DeMasters. I'm a business insurance agent with People's Insurance Agency. Um, a self-proclaimed insurance nerd. I try to help people make the complex policies a little simpler. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time and spending the week with us here. It's been great. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. And Deborah, thank you. It's, it's great having you here this week as well and loved your messaging earlier today. Thank you, Carol. Deborah Fawaz, founder of Beanie Faces. And I'm offering all of you um, a complimentary call. My information on my website is in the chat because I'm wondering, have you ever wondered how other people are receiving your online presence? Let's talk about it. I love it. And we all could use a little help in that area. So, <laughs> and you're right. Thank you so much. Schedule your call with Deborah. Hi, Nancy. So good to see you. Oh, I'll unmute you. Here we go. There you go. Hi, um, Nancy Regan here. And this has been fun. Unfortunately, my desktop has been zooming in and out i apologize but um i'm in real estate with remax preferred here in cincinnati ohio and i assist people with one of the biggest decisions that they might make in a lifetime so i help them it's an overall approach not just selling or buying a house right and you're right, it is one of the biggest decisions that you make, buying or selling real estate. And Nancy also has an extensive uh, background in, in lending as well. So um, you kind of get a twofer right there. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy, <laughs> for joining us. And Thank Joni. 
Hi, I'm Joni Sullivan Baker. I operate Buoyancy Public Relations. I help Christian authors, usually first time Christian authors, with their discoverability. So I have a sweet spot of working with the subset of Christian media, which is paid some membership organizations and trade shows there and um, help them figure out how to get reviews, interviews, and uh, connect with their audiences. That's fantastic. Thanks so much, Joni. Darlene, welcome. Hi, Darlene. Hello. Hi, how are you guys? It's um, Darlene McGillis with Maluka.com. It's a large uh, manufacturer of health products showing people how to switch to healthier brands. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Darlene. Thank you. Yeah. And hello, Blanca. Are you there, Blanca? Oh, there you are. Yes. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. Um, <laughs> hello, I am Blanca Kreiner with Abby Credit Union. And we help small companies and individuals to find their best loan or refinance their existing loan. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a great, beautiful, long weekend. Thank you so much, Blanca. And I really appreciate you. I think you've been here almost the entire whole week with us. So thank you so much. Um, I, I hope everyone has gained some valuable information, tools that you can uh, implement into your business. This is what the entire week was about. Um, we will be doing this again next month, believe it or not, towards the end of the month. So um, particularly right now, as not many of us are meeting in person, I think we can, we can continue delivering value um, to help everyone grow their businesses. So, all right, let's move on to some drawings. Um, let's see here. Who wants to go first? How about Neil? Neil, <laughs> tell us about the, the uh, gift basket that you've put together. And let's see who is going to be the lucky winner of this gift basket. Okay. So, yes. Thank you, Carol. Um, yes. Yeah, so, what I'm giving away is a, a warmer that is a nightlight. So, you can put it in any room. Um, and then three fragrance waxes um, to go along with that. Um, one of them actually is the um, June's monthly wa uh, fragrance, which okay. is Hello Summer. So perfect going into summer. Um, has a wonderful um, fruity um, smell to it. So I'm um, including that and a few other um, fragrances as well. Um, and then the bonus part of this gift basket is that I'm actually including a $25 uh, credit. Um, I've been doing a lot of bingo um, parties uh, for clients. So um, doing a $25 credit that you will get on top of what you normally get with a uh, bingo party. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Marcia. <laughs> okay, who's the lucky winner, Marianne? Okay, pulling it up on up. And you do have to be present to win. Okay, so Deborah, Deborah, forgive me for I don't know how to spell say your last name. F A W A Z. Thank you. I totally claimed that out in the universe. Thank you. Neil. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> That's I will. Fantastic. I will get with you, and we'll, we'll get that to you. Okay. Thanks. That's great. Appreciate and, you. And oh I no thought, problem. I thought we could really have some fun here and call this Freebie Friday as we wrap up. If anyone else would like to donate a raffle prize or a door prize here today, just let us know, and we'll draw draw someone. Um, this is a great way to. Um, Put some, pop something in the mail and or schedule a coffee chat with someone as well so you can continue conversations. Um, Marianne, I think you have a raffle or a door prize. I do. I am giving um, away um, an hour of my time. So if you want to um, learn how to do something online or you want to use me for some uh, design work for your social media postings, um, I'm open to either of that. So an hour of my time. Okay. Um, and I think I'm going to give away three hours of my time to three different people. Okay. Mm. Very <laughs> so, good. Nice. The first one is, um, is Lisa Winters here? No, Lisa. Okay. The next is Megan McRae. Is she on? No. Not batting a thousand here. <laughs> um, the next one, he's not here either. <laughs> what is up, Jean Mabry? I don't think she's here either. 
Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> Person's not here either. <laughs> Carol Coy, she's not here, right? <laughs> no. Deborah tell her she's <laughs> Neil. Neil, you won an hour. Oh, All right. <laughs> Yay. 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 All right. So I will send you a message. Okay. Um the next is um Kayla Murphy. Is she here? No, Kayla. Good grief. We're gonna um, we're gonna see the replay and go. Hey. Watch the replay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I wish I was there. Sarah Moon, not here, right? <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> He's not here. <laughs> Carol Walkner is not here either, right? Not today. Good. Not Lovely. today. Uh, Bonnie Sarver? Not today. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's always me. I can't give away stuff for free. Good grief. <laughs> um, Rebecca Victor, is she on? I didn't see her come in. Not today. <laughs> Jim Gray's not here. How about if we have the first two people to raise their hand? Right. Well, the next <laughs> one was, was Terry Lynn. So Please. Terry Lynn gets an hour of my time. Who? Terry Lynn. Okay. She, Perfect. She said yay. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody else want an hour of my time? First. I would. Yes, All right. Again. Tiffany, Anna, Kathleen, and Lisa. <laughs> okay. All right. So there you have Nicole, it. And Tiffany, onwards okay. to the next gifts. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And now I think we're ready for um, the grand prizes by Celeste Giordano. <laughs> All right. Remember when we started out, uh, how many of you, or who, raise your hand, who has been here? either every day or you've watched all the replays up through today. Raise your hand. So Marianne, do you see them? Um, all right. I don't think Angie was on when we asked earlier yet. All so, right. So this is the every single day, right? Every single day. This is the one that they've either been here or watched the replay. The number twos. Oh, this is number, the number two. twos. Okay. All right. Hold on one second. All right. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Raise put your, your hand, hand up or put your yeah. hand up for. I'm a number two. The replays were a great idea, Carol. Thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> yes, very grateful. Okay, got it. All right. So the first one that I'm going to do is for anybody that has been here every day or has watched the replay, the winner is going to receive 30 days, which equals four coaching calls one each week for showing up being present and supporting beautiful places going faces beautiful faces going places and most importantly supporting you wow yeah wow that's an amazing yeah. prize talk about a grand prize <laughs> <laughs> that is okay and the winner is joni Joni, lucky wow. you. <laughs> okay. Except that I wasn't in the, I shouldn't have been in the group because I actually missed, I missed Tuesday and I haven't watched the recording yet. I just said I was going. <laughs> You're so honest, Joni. <laughs> you know what? You can pick another one. Joni, you're in. Okay. You're in. Pick another one, Marianne. I appreciate your honesty, Joni. I really do. Um, this is all about serving the beautiful faces, going places community. Aww. You're being very generous. Thank you very much. Yes. And the next winner is Deborah F. Oh. Okay, so I'd like to re-donate my gift back because I'm currently <laughs> a client of Celeste, Aww. and um, I want somebody else to be able to experience the greatness. That's awesome. Thank you, Deborah. Okay, the next winner is Angie Thompson. Yay! Yay. Hey. All right. I've very been good. dying to meet you, like really, really meet you. So yay. Good, good. And then are we ready, Carol, for the grand prize? 
You know, I didn't do this in the end, but if you can see this, this is a gold brick. <laughs> okay. And I've, I've carried this thing around for seven years and it's in all my workshops and talks. And this came all the way from Fort Knox. Uh, no, no, it came all, <laughs> it, this came all the way from Canada from my very first workshop in London, Ontario, Canada. This person did this for me because I asked him to. But anyways, that gold brick is represents opportunity for each and every one of you. You know, when you truly believe that you're here to serve other people and build relationships, there are gold bricks on every street corner to help you learn, grow, and achieve your business. And the gold brick today, I am comp giving one person a complimentary 90-day coaching session of $1,500 wow. value. And you wow. had to be here every day this week, I mean, this week to show up for Carol's Beautiful Faces Going Places. So raise your hand if you've been here every day in person. Anna, Blanca, <laughs> Mary Ann, and Marianne. <laughs> Marion. Oh, and Tiffany. Did you get all those names? Here, hang on, you're on mute. Let me unmute you, Marianne. Marianne. There you go. All right, I'm doing this old style on because of limitations of that app. So, all right, I've got I've got me, Blanca, Tiffany, and who else? Anna, Marino, Marianne Chadborn, and Neil, was that, did you raise your hand? No. Uh -uh. Okay. Nancy Reagan, were you here every day? You're on mute, so. Nancy, were you here Hi. every day this week? Every day, but last night. <laughs> you mean Wednesday night? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Crude but effective. I tore papers out of my notebook, wrote everyone's name on them. They're all folded the same. I have no idea. <laughs> Drum roll. And. Ready? Sarah, the winner is. We'll go with this one. Marianne Chadbourne. Woo! Yay. All right. Congratulations, Mary Ann. What a gift. Congratulations. We can't wait to see where you will be three, 90 days from now, Mary Ann. I think you've got a fantastic business coach here, right here with Celeste. So congratulations. That is awesome. And so does uh, Joni, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah. This is awesome. Well, if you guys don't mind, um, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up. We ran a little bit over, but this was all such good stuff. I hope you all received tremendous value this week. I would love to extend an opportunity to um, do a coffee chat with you. Um, I'd love to learn more about your business if we haven't had that opportunity. Um, and if you have any questions regarding membership here at Beautiful Faces Going Places, I'd love to share with you um, how or what type of role this could um, be for you. And um, let's see here, there was one more thing I wanted to share. Oh, you know what? I would love a testimonial so if, if any of you are available uh, next week, we can schedule an opportunity for you to do your 60 minute commercial because, and then a testimonial. So I want you to do your 60 second commercial first, then a, a, like a testimonial of the value that you received this week. And then um, that's going to be great advertising for you. And I'm planning on util utilizing that and repurposing it as we gear up throughout the year for other programming. So um, it's kind of a win-win for all of us. So um, let me know if you're interested in that and I'll get that on the calendar and we'll just have some fun. Um, what else? Also, I'll, I'll add on to that, yes. Carol, 
is um, if anyone is so inclined on the Facebook page, Beautiful Faces Going Places, to um, recommend and okay. just leave a little review on Facebook. We have them on, on Google, but it's, it's nice to have them on different platforms too. Mm -hmm. So whatever platform you like the best, whether it's uh, LinkedIn or, or Facebook, um, if you um, are, are feeling inclined and, and would like to leave something on one of those pages, that would be great too. Very that would good. be great. Thank you. Thank okay. you for always thinking, Shannon. <laughs> I, I have to save your chat. Box. Oh. oh yeah, save your chat box. Thank you. <laughs> I, have something, I have something I wanted to say that I'm sorry it's going backwards a little bit, except I'm excited about this idea. And it, I put it in the chat for Neil. Wednesday night when Angie was presenting, I was, I was in the car, I was back and forth. I think sometimes you were seeing my, uh, the roof of my car and I didn't know the camera was on. I apologize. But um, anyway, I, had, I heard the discussion about Neil and his businesses and um, the, is he still here? Oh, yeah, there yeah. 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 So I had this idea, which I wondered if you had thought about as you expand your businesses with Pampered, you already have Pampered Chef, about calling yourself the fragrance of home because it takes in the Scentsy thing and it also takes in the Pampered Chef thing because cooking has all these fragrances. And then if you add other stuff to home, and anyway, anyway, I just got excited about that today and I wanted to share oh, that. Thank you. Hey. So, thank you. Anyway. Very good, Joni. Idea, great idea, Jody. Yeah. And you know, if you don't mind, I know you have been working with Angie on nailing your 60 second commercial. Maybe yes. this would be a great way to wrap up today. <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> so from what Joni said, actually, um, from the other day until now, my business has changed a little bit. So um, my business focus is really the Scentsy and the fragrance. Um, has really gone off, um, especially during this uh, COVID-19. Um, I've had to reset my monthly goal four times. Wow. Because <laughs> what I thought I could do, I, I keep eating it. So um, I just reset it again uh, yesterday. So we still have some days left of this month. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I work with Angie um, on my commercial. And um, I actually gave it to her and said, okay, what do you think? She was like, oh, it looks good. You know? And so I will go ahead and tell you what we came up with. Um, so basically what it is, is um, did you know fragrances continue to play a beneficial and purposeful role in adding to the quality of life, a tradition as old as mankind? I can help you as my name is Neil Pishka, the fragrance guy. And my purpose is to bring fragrance into your life from home to your work setting. Nice. That's fantastic. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I, that was awesome. <laughs> Great. He really did that all by himself. That was not really, I was just the sounding board. He's like, hey, look what I have now. I said, well, that's great. We are done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here for the first virtual business week. And we're looking forward to uh, serving you again and creating this program as a continued program here at Beautiful Faces Going Places. So have a fabulous Memorial Day weekend. Um, and thank you guys for everything. I so appreciate spending the time with you. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.